This call may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance purposes. Prime, this is Nikki. Uh, Nikki Wahoot in the building. How you feel? What's up? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. What's going on? You know who this is, right? You you got to know who this is, right? This well, is, I, sh I, I think so. This is Lockout. Lockout. Okay. I didn't know your first name. Is it LaShawn? Yeah, it's LaShawn. Okay. All right. I, I think it's kind of loud. I, I think we're... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to be loud. Hold on. No, I mean like the, the there's like background noise or something. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm driving. Oh, that. okay, okay. You hearing all that air and all that good stuff? No, I like that. I tried to turn it down a little bit. I, I, I think I tweaked okay. it a little bit. So, how's it going? It's going pretty good. We're just busy, busy around here. I, it, yo, I, I, I see. So, let's <laughs> let's 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 just jump right into it, man. Um, uh, everybody know that this is Nikki Ho. She is the recruiter for Prime. What should I call you like one of the premier uh recruiters at Prime? <laughs> I mean, I guess you can. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's uh let's let's uh talk about it, man. Right? Uh how how long have you been with Prime as a recruiter? Uh let's see. Uh I've been with Prime seven years in September. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Yeah. Now, since uh, now, now, what have you was doing before you got with Brian? What was you in the transportation um, field? No, no, I um, I was a paralegal. Oh, okay. So you was a lawyer, chick. <laughs> yeah, I did all the work. You know, they uh, get paid for it, and then I do all the work. <laughs> I know, right? That's kind. Of, that's kind of crazy <laughs> that they get they they get the big money. But yet, they, yep. but yet they use you guys to to, to do all the footwork for everything. and everything. That's crazy. Yeah. So, yep. so you decided to leave out of that profession and and, and to get into transportation. What? Well, I I had applied for Prime for um I first started in their verifications department doing like background checks and work history verification and things like that. So I kind of used my experience with like criminal stuff and mm -hmm. in the legal field to kind of do that. So I did that for a couple years and then I switched over to recruiting, but it was all in the recruiting department that I worked. Okay. 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 Now, since, uh, now, since you got with prime and you, you know, you've been with them seven years deep, what has some of the changes that you saw with prime throughout the years? Oh, gosh, I feel like Prime's always changing. I feel like Robert kind of tries to look in the future on stuff. And, you know, if he sees a change that's coming in the next 20 years, he tries to do it, you know, in the next 10. You know, so I feel like he is so innovative that we've had so many changes, you know, electronic logs taking over, which, you know, we've been doing that for a really long time. But, you know, working with drivers, we took on a lot of drivers that had never even used an electronic log. Um, so, you know, that mandate coming in, um, there's been a lot of internal changes to where, you know, we used to let people get their permit here and now they get it in the state that they live in. So there's been a lot of changes. So with, so let's talk about the ELDs and, and, and the old school drivers that have been with you guys for a long time. How did that, how did that hit them? Uh, when, when the mandate went into, went into, uh, went, went into effect. For prime drivers, yes. or no, or, prime. or other, well, yeah, prime prime veteran drivers, because I'm I'm sure with like some of the new jacks that's coming in, they they coming in already knowing about the about the mandate. But for the veterans that were so used to running, you know, paper laws, and now e laws is coming in and being the being the mandate. How 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 do you think it affected them? Well, I think that Prime was way ahead of the industry. I think that um, 
I can't even remember what year that that went into to effect, maybe 2018, 2019. I can't remember for everybody else, but we had been doing um, e-logs for probably eight years before it went into a, a mandatory effect. So, okay. I mean, I think our drivers have been used to it. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's, let's get down to it. They, you guys recently changed again, as far as, uh, as far as uh, new drivers coming, you know, coming in, uh, y'all changed y'all changed it from being out with a trainer from, I think it was eighty thousand miles, and then y'all dropped it back down to like what fifty or thirty now. Um, no, I think it was fifty or sixty before for oh, students. Okay. You know, okay. fifty or sixty thousand. Okay. Um, we recently just updated that the training program to where it's thirty thousand which still sounds like a lot, but that 30,000 is split between them and the trainer. Okay. Um, so, you know, it doesn't take them as long as what they think of it, you know, a good eight weeks and they could have that done. Um, and then we also updated our pay too. So okay. Okay. these new guys coming in, you know, they come in with a permit, they go out and drive with their trainer for, you know, two to four weeks, depending on however much time they need. And then during that time, we offer them a cash advance every Friday to help with food and things like that if they need it. But once they pass their road exam and they have their CDL, um, then their pay is a $900 a week guarantee. Okay, okay, okay. During okay. training, now yeah. This, now, this is for, so. now this is for like like new jacks that's coming out of school, right? Not, not, not guys no, that already that would have be, experience. Right. So that the program I just went over is our student training program. Mm -hmm. That would be somebody that's coming in with a permit. Mm -hmm. Now, if you come to us as a recent graduate and you already have the CDL, but you just don't have the experience, you would do 40,000 miles with a TNT trainer. And so for the first 30 days, it's an $800 a week guarantee. After 30 days, and when, until you complete your miles, it's a nine hundred dollar a week guarantee. Okay. Now, for for the people that now I know a lot of people is probably familiar with it because they heard they hear these terms over and over again mm -hmm. with different with different people that that drove for you guys. But the terms TNT, uh, uh, TT, or whatever trifecta. Can you can you uh, let the people know what that what what those terms are? Well, it's, it's just kind of a lingo thing that we use. Um, it's like training with a trainer, um, team driving training, something like that. Oh, okay. So the PSD is the prime student driving program. Right. So, and then TNT would be like the portion where you're driving with a trainer and more of like a team driving scenario. All right. All right. So, so. I, I'm, I'm about to throw. I'm about to play devil's advocate because you know, of oh, course, God. of course, Prime, you know, has been under the micro, has been under the microscope, you know, a few, uh, a few times. I, I just want to get, yes. I, I just want to get your stance on some of the, on some of the crazy situations that uh, some of the, uh, I would say, some of the former drivers said about mm -hmm. the company. Like for example, um, uh, the trainers don't train the the trainees properly when it comes to a female and a male, you know, situations like that happened. Uh, uh, again, it was a situation with a, with a female that she was the uh, she was more like a uh, a chauffeur as a sort. What do what, what do you say? What, what do you say? Uh, what do you say about that to former drivers that 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 says that that says stuff? I like mean, that? I don't think that that's the prime culture. Like you know, I live and breathe it and see it every day. I mean, for women, we have the Highway Diamonds program, and so I think that like fourteen percent of our fleet are women. So we have like some of the highest percentage of women drivers out there. And so I see a lot of women being super successful as drivers. We have the, the Highway Diamonds program. Mm -hmm. We also have female liaisons where if they're ever having an issue, they have other females in management that they can have direct access to 
you know, if they don't want to go to their fleet manager because he's a male or whatever. I mean, we have different, um, you know, ways and avenues for them to work out those situations. And I would hate if somebody wasn't happy or wasn't didn't feel that they were being treated nicely. But I don't know anything about that mm-hmm. scenario. But just prime as a whole, I don't feel like that's our culture at all. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so from from start to finish, uh, Nikki, uh, someone will make a phone call to you. You you know you 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 become their recruiter. So from mm-hmm. from start to finish, to the driver actually get into you know into the driver's seat of a prime uh, of a prime vehicle. What's uh, what's mm-hmm. the process? Well, I mean, first of all, it kind of depends on if they're an experienced driver or if they're brand new and they don't have a permit. So we have people call in that's never even studied. So we can help them through all of that, provide them with study guides. Um, I had a lady call in this Monday, and she had been studying. She went by Wednesday and passed her permit, and then she's coming in on the 26th. So, I mean, it's kind of on a case-to-case basis. Yeah, I mean, it's on a case-to-case basis on when the applicant wants to start. Um, I mean, we start orientations every Monday and Wednesday. Um, If it is... If it is somebody that has a permit and they just need to come in for training, typically only takes us about 24 hours to run their background reports and everything and get them approved. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as as far as running their background now, would they be would they be there when you run their background or would they be like at home and you run the background and then you approve them and then they can come in? Yes, we do everything on the front end. So we check their driving record, work references, um, criminal background reports, everything on the front end before we give them an offer. So that's why we're really big on making sure that they complete the application 100% honest, Mm -hmm. no matter what it may be, because we don't want somebody to get here, you know, on a false application and then provide stuff and then get sent home. That's just not how we like to work. I got you. I got you. Um, what can, what, what can get you disqualified? Um, like I said, a falsified application, mm-hmm. um, failed drug screenings, obviously, yeah, um, <laughs> too many, uh, moving violations, accidents or incidents within the last three years, okay. um, you know, multiple license suspensions, uh, terminations from carriers for, um, you know, accident issues, rollovers, things like that. Okay. 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 Um, so in the orientation, how, how long is it? And I'm, 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 I'm speaking as a veteran driver. So how, how long would it be for a veteran driver versus how long would it be for a new, for a new driver? Um, really they're, they're about the same. They're about three days. Mm -hmm. Um, and we do cover your hotel stay and then three meals a day. Um, since COVID started, we have been, you know, trying to get rental cars for people to get here okay. rather than sending them on a bus or anything like that. Yeah, we we, yeah, um, we, need, the, know, we need the rentals because brother man don't do Greyhound. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, I totally get it. Um, but, you know, with COVID, things have really changed a lot. Um if they do come in on a bus or a flight, you know, and they haven't been vaccinated and they've been exposed on mass transportation, their orientation will be longer because we want them to be quarantined before we put them on a trainer's truck oh, gotcha. to okay. protect everybody, you know, for possible exposures. But if you can come in on a, in a rental or if you have been vaccinated, it's about a three day orientation. OK. Uh, is the orientation paid, by the way? For experienced drivers, it is. It's typically around $83 a day for orientation pay. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, we cover all three meals in your hotel stay. All right. Uh, what about a sign-on bonus? No, you know, we've never done sign-on bonuses. We we just want to pay good all the time. Okay, okay. All right, so what about what about for drug testing? Uh, is, it, is it urine, hair follicle, or what, or both? 
You know, we don't really disclose that. Um, okay. It's just kind of our company policy, but I can tell you, you know, we, you know, like to see everybody to be federally illegal, um, you know, drug free gotcha. for at least 12 months, about 12 months. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So um, is, is Prime considered a, a, a force dispatch type of company? Um, the company drivers are. Um, but our lease operators are not force dispatched. Okay. Now, as far as uh, as far as company drivers and what you guys could offer them, um, for a veteran driver, say like that got like six years or more, what well, what would be their starting rate? Uh, I mean, typically we would just have to kind of look at their work history and everything. If their work history is recent, then we can take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. But just, you know, solo drivers and, like, refrigerated start out at 51 cents a mile okay. in our lightweight trucks. And then um, I heard if you that. get a full-size condo, yeah. So the lightweight trucks are um, like a single sleeper in the back. They're lighter weight. They're fuel efficient. So you okay. get paid more per mile. Okay. And, and then the full-size condo with two sleepers in the back are 46 cents a mile. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, now you so got that's for refrigerated. All right, but you guys have multiple divisions, though. You, mm -hmm. you, you guys got what? Yeah. Flat, you, you guys got flatbed, tanker, uh, van, and and reefer, right? Well, we have refrigerated, flatbed, and tanker. We don't do dry van, but we do have intermodal as well. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um. Now, as far as now, as far as flatbed goes, is that is that a different rate? And and do you guys mm -hmm. train uh, for securement training? We and do. All like that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's forty eight cents a mile um, starting out for flatbed, and then of course on top of that, you would get tarping pay. Uh, tarping pay is kind of negotiated per customer, mm -hmm. um, but I always say it's like maybe an extra hundred and fifty a week on average. All right. So to drive the tanker, do you need your do you need your hazmat? You do not. No, uh -huh. but you just need the tanker endorsement, and that one's fifty three cents a mile to start out. Okay. Okay. So, so Nikki, let me ask you this: throughout uh, for for the the four divisions that you have, which one would you suggest? I mean, like, let's say somebody that's interested in in that, well, that that wasn't well, that that was like saying they want to come in and they just want to drive, instead of just saying right off the rip, let me put you in a in a reefer. But would you suggest other divisions to uh, it, to a potential it, driver? It kind of depends. It depends, really. To be honest with you, it's going to be a personal preference because. Um, like flatbed's kind of physical, mm -hmm. so you would like have to be able to like chain and tarp those loads. You would be tarping all of that and chaining it out the elements. Mm -hmm. So I will ask the people, you know, is that something you're comfortable with? You, do, you know, would you, are you physical enough where you can climb up and down on those trailers and things like that? Do you want to be out being in the rain and the snow? Mm -hmm. Some people like that because they stay active. Okay. Okay, that's what's up. So it's kind of like, it, it's a personal preference. My dad, you know, has done flatbed for years and years and years. And then he recently just switched over to dry van just because he's getting older and uh, it's hard on him. Now, a lot of a, a lot of the guys that uh, that did, that, that do come into Prime and they do start in, in, in one situation, but then end up being in another situation, like leasing, for example, uh, mm -hmm. I see a lot of, you know, I see a lot of YouTubers that started, you know, as as a reefer company driver, but then they migrated it over to uh, over. Yeah, to, uh, that, that least, happens a lot. What, what 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 can you tell us about what, what what a little bit, if you can tell us about what you guys can offer in leasing and why? Would well, leasing there's a couple, be, you know, be the thing to go. OK, gotcha. I mean, it kind of, again, it's all on a case-to-case -case basis, but a lease operator, you know, you're not going to be forced this patch. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a little bit more flexibility on home time and things like that. You're going to, you know, be more of like your own boss and, and, and that sort of thing. 
there's a standard lease, which most people start out with. And that one is the, the no money down, no credit check. You can walk away at any time. Um, and then you're paid 72% of the revenue. Mm. And then, you know, there's lease completion bonus at the end of that. Um, there's a rider policy at no cost, a pet policy at no cost. Um, hey. You know, you still run in. Yeah. Will we be able, like, all right, so I'm leasing the truck. And let's say, mm-hmm. you know, I paid into it, like, X amount of, you know, X amount of time that I paid into it. And let's just say I decided that, hey, I want to go to Cal Art or I want to go to U.S. Express. Can I take the truck with me or no? Uh, I mean, if you're doing a lease purchase and that's your truck, then I think that you can. But the walkaway lease, um, I believe that that's just with Prime. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. Continue. I'm sorry. I, I, I was just, no, it's okay. I was just going to say that on leasing, you're still running under Prime's fuel network. So you mm-hmm. get all the price breaks and everything. Um, there's volume discounts on tires and parts and all of that. Um, you'll also get like quarterly mile incentives, um, longevity incentives. And, and again, the home home time policy allows you to, to kind of pick and choose your home time. Okay. Where would uh now as far as the the, the fuel networks because a lot of companies get you know got like discounts with like pilots flying mm. chains loves uh, it, yeah. are you, are you guys good with everybody or is it just a certain fuel uh, stations? Yeah, that I think we it's like pilot. Uh, I don't know all of the fuel stations, but I do know it's like pilot, petro, ta, things like that. Oh, okay, okay. Um, of course we could take the truck home. Yes, even company drivers take their truck home. All right, so if we if we take our truck home, so we have we have a uh, what do you call it uh, a secure lot for the trailer. Would mm-hmm. I be able to, Would I be able to disconnect from my trailer and you know and Bob tail home and put my truck in my in, in my driveway or in my yard? Can I you know, that? I think that's something. That's probably more of a dispatcher question. I don't really okay. handle that. Um, I think that, you know, if you just communicated communicated with them of, hey, I don't have somewhere at home for the trailer, they may even set you up with, like, a customer to where you could park everything while you're on home time. Okay, okay. All right. So, yeah. so, so Nikki, I, it, it seems as though everybody and their mama has a YouTube page when it, when it, when it comes to crime. <laughs> Do you guys yeah. have some? Do you do you guys have the book of YouTube? I mean, like while while I'm in while I'm in orientation, is there somebody that comes no. in there at the end of orientation to say, hey, you know, we're we're the YouTube guys and we want to set you up with a YouTube <laughs> page? Do do you guys have um, that? <laughs> no. Not not that heck, not that I'm aware of, but I think that people, you know, these guys that have done so well with their referral program, you know, Junior Honduras, Blake Mm -hmm. Tubbs, those type of people. I mean, they have it figured out because we have a a really good referral program. And so the more that they can refer, the more money that they're making. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm definitely familiar with uh, with Junior Honduras and and Blake as well. Um, Me, I'm, I'm more of I'm I'm more of the type of guy that, you know, I I I did promote my company back in the day when I did work for yeah. a particular company. I I promoted it, the hell I promoted the hell out of them, but I, it was just to a point now that I just feel with the the budget that yeah, you know, the companies including Prime has that they could just bring us in, especially now, you know, Guys like myself, Junior, Blake, mm-hmm. we we have a we have a social media footprint, and it would be better, you know, to bring us in because we work for the company, we promoting the company. Why not just pay us directly instead of just you know just referring on our referrals? Um, I you know I think it's just I don't know. But I think that our referral program is working in in their favor, and I don't want to speak out of turn because I'm not I'm not them. But no, I think you, that 
I think that it's helped them. Um, I know it's stressful. I mean, because I know those guys get thousands of emails and thousands, mm-hmm. you know, people are constantly wanting them as trainers. And, you know, they can only train one person at, at a time. But mm-hmm. I know it's stressful, but we need people like you guys that are good role models out there posting good stuff. I mean, there's all right. kinds of stuff out there. So, yes, I mean, we need people that are are good for the industry people i don't think people realize how profitable a truck driver can be and how much money is out there i mean do you agree with that people don't understand that i agree wholeheartedly um you know there there is you know there there is money to be made but it's just the way that you know it's just the way that that potential driver gotta go by gotta go by uh gotta go by get you know, it's, I mean, coming in, of course, coming in, you're not going to make that six figures coming in. But maybe exactly. maybe two, three years down the line, maybe you'll get with yep. that one good company that you can. You know, but yeah, I, you know, I, I asked the question uh, to one of my co-hosts before and um, and I asked him, I was like, I, I'm kind of noticing that as a company driver, I, depending on what it is, but I haven't, I have yet to see a company driver make anything more than like 60 cent a mile with, with, with the majors. All right. Maybe with a mom and pop, yeah. you could probably go an extra 10, but for like, yeah, but those guys you typically don't have the, the freight network to keep those guys. They may pay them 60 cents a mile, but in my experience, they don't have the miles to make that uh, where they can make big money every week. Exactly. And I, like I said, I may be speaking out of turn, but I mean, with Prime paying 51 cents a mile and our, and our pay has went up, like I think for the past five years in a row for mm-hmm. our company drivers. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that, you know, the 13 week average, and this is a little, I'm a little behind on this, my profit summaries from May that I have in front of me, but those those company drivers are making around thirteen fifty on average. Mm-hmm. Now, top performers on a company driver can, you know, are around sixteen hundred. Okay, okay. And that that's you know just kind of a, 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 a of course there's people out there making more than that. That that runs really hard, you know. All right, Nikki, is there any favoritism at Prime? I, you know, some of the guys on some some of the former guys said that. It kind of is, but I, I want to know from you uh, if um, if it is or is it. I mean, I don't know where there would be favoritism, just because there's so many different. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think so personally, but um, I'm trying to think of what they would mean by that. Uh, say, like for example, they get like they get with a fleet manager, and you know that fleet manager is 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 giving the prime lows to to their you know to oh their, gotcha 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 yeah, to their favorite uh, runners instead of giving I don't, it to the giving it to the guys that's trying to that's trying to make a you know trying to make a move trying to make be an up and comer sort of say yeah i don't really um you know like i said i just work in recruiting so i'm not i'm not a fleet manager or anything so i don't have really real life information on that but i will say that you know if you're a lease operator and you're turning down loads left and right your fleet manager's probably going to eventually realize that and start giving the good loads to the person that's willing to haul all the time okay. um but i don't know that but i'm just saying like to see the big picture of it i could see where that would happen to where if you got somebody that's super picky and only wants to take this load or they don't they don't want to run here and they want to run here Mm -hmm. you know if you've got somebody that's like hey i'll go anywhere give me give me loads you know then that person's probably going to be more successful because if you get a load that you don't like and you turn it down and you just want to sit you may be missing out on the next load after that that's going to pay big. So you got to keep running to just keep getting those loads. All right. Any any extra pay for, you know, guys that goes up into New York or New York City or in the boroughs or anything like that? You know, not that I'm aware of. There, uh, there may be, but it's not something that they tell us about here in recruiting. That might be something that's, you know, negotiated from 
fleet manager to driver. Um, we don't go a lot into the boroughs, but, but we do drive in the state of New York. Okay. Now, of course, uh, you know, drivers with, with scrimmage backgrounds, you know, some of them are felons. Mm -hmm. um, some of them, you know, with criminal backgrounds and mm -hmm. all like that. Uh, we know of a few companies out there, you know, that are second chance companies like Western Express. Um, what about you guys? What, what's your guys' st uh, stance on uh, drivers with it, felons? It's really all on a case to case basis. Um, so that's why we ask everybody to list it on the application. It's not to disqualify them. It's just to make sure that if we can move forward with them or with them or not. So I have a conversation with every single person that I, you know, recruit, ask them about any felonies or misdemeanors in their lifetime. They tell me what they have, and then I will let them know if they're qualified. Just because somebody has a felony doesn't mean that they're not going to be able to work here. We, we bring in felons all the time. Um, but it just, um, depends on the charge and when it occurred and when it, everything was taken care of. Um, we don't bring anybody in that's on probation or parole. All right. Um, and so, and then uh, I'm, yeah, I'm assuming, it's just really a case-to-case -case basis. I'm assuming you guys don't do that anyway because the, the, the guys that's on probation or parole, they, they won't be able to leave the right. state. Right. Yeah, and some of them, some of them can leave state. You know, I've I've had people call in before and say, "Oh no, I can leave state," but um, we just don't do it. It's just a company policy. All right, all right. Now let's uh, jump back to the ladies. Uh, you said that uh, you said that Prime is always good to the ladies, and and we, you know, by 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 the number of ladies that has YouTube pages mm -hmm. that drive for you guys. Um, if any situation like that, that a female does feel uncomfortable with a trainer, what's what's her options as far as well as that? Yeah, they are given they are giving direct contact information for our female liaison. Mm -hmm. um, they can if they're ever in the terminal and they have a problem, they can they could come and find me if they wanted to, and I would I would help them. Okay. I think that they could, you know, go to, go to any female here. Um, Brooke Mosley is the female liaison, and, and, you know, anybody, Andrea Mueller, any of us right. ladies would help them. They could always reach out to us. So there won't be no it, – it, 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 when the ladies come in there and, and, and train with Prime and want to, you know, and want to get their license and get trained by a good mm -hmm. trainer, but if they end up getting a bad trainer, they, they won't they, – they won't – they themselves won't be subjected to be any scrutiny or anything like that. Of course, no, like you said, no, you get in contact it with even you or anybody like yeah, that. Yeah, it be. even yeah, it even happens with males. I mean, it's really. I mean, even sometimes males get a trainer and they're just they just don't mesh well. You know, there's uh, personality conflicts and just different things. So they can always call in, um, talk to the people over the training department. There's a couple different guys over there that anybody can call and talk to and say, hey, this is just not working out. Like, I want to work for Prime, but, you know, maybe maybe a different trainer would be best for me. And that's something we'll take into consideration and look into it. All right. Nikki Holt. What is it? Holst or Holt? Yost. Yost. Yost with a Y. Yost. Yost. Where the hell I get? <laughs> you, you know me. I, I beat up people's names like crazy. But, hey. I do very, very much appreciate you coming on and uh, and chopping uh, it and chopping it up with me. Uh, I I've been again, like I said, I've been following you guys. You know, just you know, just to keep my you know, just to keep myself fresh, just in case somebody asks yeah. me. You know, well, what do you think of Prime? What do you think of this company? What do you think of that company? And I'd be like, oh, okay, well, from the information that I gathered, I could just turn around and just. And just run it off, man. right? Nikki Holt. Before yep. before you get out of here, tell the people why why they should come to Prime. This could be like an outro for you. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, you cut out. Sorry. Oh, what there was you that? Go. Oh yeah, I did cut out. Hold on, hold on. Let me get my <laughs> second bar back. Okay. Uh, all right. So for your for your for your outro, Nikki. Let the people let let the people know why they should come over to Prime and 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 
and why Prime should be the company that they drive for? Well, I mean, I think if you guys, if these people just do their research, Prime pays awesome during training. They pay good, you know, they pay awesome afterwards. We've been in business since the 70s. We're not going anywhere. No. Like I said before, you know, Robert is 10 years ahead of most most companies out there, if not all of them. They're, most other companies look at Prime as that Prime has set the standard and they try to be as good as Prime. Mm. Let, them know, uh, let them know how they can get in contact with you and let them know where Prime is located at. Okay. Well, we have a terminal in Springfield, Missouri, one in Pittston, Pennsylvania, and Salt Lake City, Utah. We hire from all 48 states. Um, you can call me at 417-521-3598, or you could always do an online application and list me as your recruiter. I would love, love, love to work with you. All right. That's what's up. And before, and, and my <laughs> last question, as far as recruiters go, because, you know, a lot, a lot of recruiters, you know, sometimes they just do this just to get you in the seat. Are are you on commission, or are 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 or yep. are you straight? Are you straight from from prime? How that no, work? um, yeah, no, we we are paid um, incentive based. Everybody at Prime is paid per incentive. Even the people in the cafeteria. Robert's motto is, you know, the people that work hard, they get paid they get paid more. I mean, the better you are at your job, you get paid more. So um, we do have like longevity incentives. So it's not just about the hire, you know, and I have, you know, a whole bunch of family that's in trucking. So I kind of understand it on a different level. My dad, my grandma, my grandpa. Um, so, I mean, I kind of understand it and I can appreciate it. And I know what type of sacrifice that you guys put in out there. So Right. Um, but yeah, the longer my drivers stay, um, you know, I, I appreciate that. And I try to reach out to them as much as possible. And, and we're just, we are a big family. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. Prime Inc. <laughs> Everybody out of Springfield, Missouri, right over there. Off sure. of, what, what's that? 40, what, what, what's that? 40? I-44. I-44, right, we, right, <laughs> right over there by the Oklahoma, Missouri line. He definitely can't miss it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> definitely cannot miss it. Um, Nikki Yoke, thank you very much for uh, chopping no it up. No problem. With me. I really do appreciate it. You are a citizen. So anytime you have anything special or uh, any updates or something like that, you know how to get in contact with me by, uh, you got, you know, you got the number now or, you know, how, mm -hmm. or, or DM where we've been communicating through. Uh, back and forth. Thank you very much. Sounds good. Um, again, uh, guys, Prime Inc., Nikki Yoke, you can get in contact with her directly. Um, Nikki, I'm going to give you my email address. Or no, you know what? Send it to me in the DM. Send me the um, okay your contact information and any information that you want me to put in the, um, in the description, and I'll put it okay. in there. Okay, sounds good. All right. Awesome. You take thank it. you so much. No, thank you. You take it easy and have an awesome day. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Nikki Yoke, everybody. Man. Prime update. Uh, me and her been going back and forth in the in the DM, uh, talking about, you know, talking about the different opportunities that Prime uh that Prime has for you guys. And, and you guys know Prime. I mean, all you got to do is just type it in uh, type type it in YouTube, and there it is. Uh, a lot of successful drivers uh, that was at Prime, that started at Prime. A lot of success, successful YouTubers like uh, Tiny House Dreaming, Trucker Brown, Low Shine Parts, Blake Tubbs, um, Trucker Nene, Junior Herdaris. Uh, no hippie trucking. There's there's a lot of you there's a lot of YouTubers that drive for Prime and that's doing very very well. Again, you know, just do your just do your research. And if you'd like to know more about Prime, just reach out to the people that I just mentioned: Blake Tubbs, um, Junior Blake Tubbs, Junior Hernandez. Hernandez? What'd I say? Hernandez? <laughs> Those are the 
Junior her 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 Doris. All right. Just reach out to them if you want to know more about Prime. And definitely you can get in contact with uh Miss Nikki Yoked. She could be your uh be your recruiter and you could be driving for Prime today. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the Lockout Men Podcast Show, the MT. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for the MTC edition of the Lockout Men Podcast Show. Thank you for watching. If you guys find any value in the content that I am doing for you, support the channel by liking. It's It really helps and it's free. You know, let let the YouTube algorithm know that you mess with the Lockout Men podcast show. If you guys want to know more about Prime, the information for Prime is in the description below. If you like to suggest a company for me to call, let me know in the comments below. Let me know who you, who you would like for me to call. If you want uh, a shout out, because these calls are not sponsored. You know, support the call with a cup of coffee. That's all you got to do. All right. You guys take it easy and I will come back at you with another video. Peace. Searching, 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 I'm searching, searching.